In our last episode, we finally, after five other episodes and hours and hours of gameplay, dealt with Benny. And since we're siding with Mr. House, we activated his vast Securitron army in the bunker of a weather monitoring station behind the walls of Caesar's camp atop Fortification Hill. We have now made Mr. House arguably one of the most powerful entities in all of the Mojave. We now have but to return to the Lucky 38 and ask Mr. House what happens next. The foundation is laid. My Securitrons on the Strip are upgraded, and those at the fort ready for action. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the attitudes of some lesser groups while we wait for Caesar's Legion to attack Hoover Dam. The next step is to add the Boomer's considerable firepower to my growing arsenal, or at the very least, ensure their neutrality. The Boomers, eh? I'd like to ask some questions. I'd rather you just dealt with the Boomers, but all right. So let's say your scheme is successful and your robotic army allows you to keep control of Vegas. What happens then? New Vegas is more than a city. It's the remedy to mankind's derailment. The city's economy is a blast furnace in which can be forged the steel of a new rail line running straight to a new horizon. What is the NCR? A society of people desperate to experience comfort, ease, luxury. A society of customers. With all that money pouring in, give me 20 years and I'll reignite the high technology development sectors. 50 years and I'll have people in orbit. 100 years and my colony ships will be heading for the stars to search for planets unpolluted by the wrath and folly of a bygone generation. Space exploration within a hundred years? I think Mr. House is the only faction leader promising that. But in the meantime, you'd rule Vegas as what, some kind of dictator? I prefer the term autocrat. I would rule as a chief executive. I would not answer to a board of directors or any other entity. Nothing to impede progress. If you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the windows. But what's to keep you from abusing your power? My judgment. I have no interest in abusing others, just as I have no interest in legislating or otherwise dictating what people do in their private time. Nor have I any interest in being worshipped as some kind of machine god messiah. I am impervious to such corrupting ambitions. But autocracy? Firm control in the hands of a technological and economic visionary? Yes, that Vegas shall have. Okay, guess we'll just have to take his word for it. All right, House, tell me about the boomers. They occupied Nellis Air Force Base a little over 50 years ago. One of my Securitrons got some video of their arrival and then exploded. Odds are they were vault dwellers. That's everything I know about them, really. All right, then let's get back to business. What do you want me to do with them again? As I was saying, I need you to enlist or neutralize the boomers at Nellis Air Force Base. Enlist or neutralize, all right. Don't worry, House. I'll make sure they support the right side. Use extreme caution when approaching the base. Their firepower is considerable. Recently, one of my roaming Securitrons observed a man near the base studying the pattern of its artillery fire. Maybe he's learned something. We discover Nellis Air Force Base by walking to the extreme northeastern corner of the map. We find a road out of Vegas that takes us right there. And along the way, we stumble upon the man that Mr. House was talking about. His name is George. And we learn by talking with him that he's discovered a few ways to approach the boomers from safety. This region is so dangerous because the boomers shoot first and ask questions later. They sit behind a gate at the Nellis Air Force Base using large howitzers to bomb the road and small town just outside the base, making it nearly impossible to approach without dying unless we use George's advice. Now, I covered the boomers in depth and completed all of their side quests in my dedicated video, which you can watch here. 
In that video, we helped the boomers retrieve a bomber from the bottom of Lake Mead. Their ultimate goal is to restore the bomber into working condition so that the pilots whom they're currently training will be able to fly it to protect the boomers. We have two ways to complete this step for Mr. House. The leader of this faction is a woman named Pearl. We find her in her barracks, and it's here where she gives us all of her quests. But one of the options House gave us was to simply neutralize the boomers so that no other faction can advantage from their firepower. So option number one is assassination. You can make this easy. Set. Killing Pearl is just the first half of this mission. To complete it, we must venture into the main hangar here at Nellis Air Force Base and assassinate Loyal. Loyal is one of the other octogenarian leaders of the Boomers faction, whose mechanical repair and engineering abilities allow the Boomers to repair the bomber in the first place. Assassinating him ensures that the Boomers never take to the skies. If we choose the assassination route, we can return to the Lucky 38 to check in with House. Any progress with the Boomers? I had to wipe out their leadership. There's more than one way to skin a cat, as the saying goes. Or went, that is. Cats being extinct. I don't promote political assassination as a first option, but it has a long and storied history. I'll consider the Boomers neutralized. Sounds like House isn't terribly thrilled about political assassinations, though he does recognize their usefulness. And wait a minute, did House say that the cat was extinct? While this is tricky because it flies in the face of established lore, there's a quest in Fallout 2 called Listen to Stacy's Kitty Story, where we learn that cats are not actually extinct, however they are hunted for their meat. The point of Stacy's tragic story is that someone stole her cat cuddles and ate it. But then again in Fallout 4, there's that quest outside Vault 81 called Here Kitty Kitty, where we have to find the missing cat Ashes and return it to her owner, Aaron Combs. So it looks like House is wrong here. The cat is not extinct. But maybe House didn't know any better. After all, we find ashes on the East Coast. Maybe cats were only hunted to extinction on the West Coast. We can't expect House to know what happened on the East. At any rate, before I get further sidetracked, there is another option to resolve the Boomer Dilemma. Instead of assassinating Pearl and Loyal to remove them as potential threats, we can complete all of their quests. If we do, the next time we talk with Pearl... Hello, friend. How can Mother Pearl be of help today? She offers us her help. We can say, there may be a battle in the near future at Hoover Dam. Can you offer any assistance? Of course, my child. After all that you have done for us, we would love to help you in the upcoming battle. After all the training and virtual reality, the young ones would relish an opportunity to put their skills to battle. We'll be there when you need us. And with that, the Boomers offer their help in battle to Mr. House. We can check in with House to report our success. Any progress with the Boomers? I've secured their loyalty. They'll do as I say. Well done. The Boomers' firepower may prove an advantage when the battle for Hoover Dam comes around. Your next assignment won't take you far. It concerns the Omertas and their den of vice, Gamora. As the decisive encounter between the bull and the bear looms close, my concerns about the Omertas have grown. I've never expected loyalty, mind you. A reliably underhanded tribe is just as constant to deal with as one that always runs true. But that's just it. Lately, the Omerta's cooperative silence has been deafening. Not a single complaint. They're up to something. The Omertas? Well, wait a minute. Let me ask you a few questions about that first. I suppose the Omertas can wait a few minutes. I thought you recruited the Omertas, you know, to be one of the three families of the Strip. Yes, though at the time they called themselves the Slitherkin. A vicious clan, not that that's changed exactly. They were nomads, capable fighters, but their specialty was betrayal. They'd invite travelers into their yurts, drug them, murder, or enslave them. They took pride in their craft. I don't think Omertas saw other people as people at all. Everyone else was just 
prey. They reminded me of a certain criminal element Vegas used to attract. I told them some stories, gave them some clothes, and they ran with it. So wait a minute, you sought out a tribe of nomads infamous for their betrayal? Knowing this, you recruited them and made them dress up and talk like the Italian Mafia? Doesn't exactly sound very smart to me, House. But since we're in this situation, don't worry. I'll check into the Omertas. The Omertas are fanatically loyal to each other. Still, among any group, one can find the occasional degenerate. Gomorrah's receptionist happens to be one. For years, she passed on whispers of what was taking place at the casino in exchange for payment. A few months ago, she clammed up. Odds are she's scared. But I've had no way of approaching her. Start with her. Heading to Gamora, we can check in with the receptionist as House instructed. I'm calling in for an outstanding balance for some information. Tell me what the Omertas are up to. <sighs> I knew someone would call in that mark soon. What do you want to know? I need to know who to talk to about what's been going on in Gamora. All I can tell you is to find Kachino. He's the lowest level lieutenant you're going to be able to talk to. Some of the girls say he's been involved in some shady business the family wouldn't really like. Ask him about it. Now I covered the drama that went on here at Gamora in a three-part series I published recently, which you can watch here. You should watch that series first before watching this video any further because we need to go over a few spoilers about that story. We can resolve the Gamora dilemma in one of three ways, each of which garners a different response from Mr. House. If we choose to side with the Gamora bosses, we learn about their ultimate goal to poison the civilians of the Strip with chlorine gas, all as part of a dramatic distraction which will ultimately end with Caesar appointing the Omertas as new overlords of the Strip. If we uncover the details of this plot, and if we work with the Omertas to help them get chlorine and a weapon stash, we can then check in with Mr. House to tell him all about it. What do you have to report about the Omertas? When the Legion assaults Hoover Dam, the Omertas are going to massacre everyone on the Strip. And how do you know this? We can respond one of two ways. We can say, well, I kind of helped them perfect their plan. I see. So where does that put us? At this point, we can either betray House and try to kill him, or we can say, House, there was nothing I could do. Trying to stop them would just be a suicide mission. Can't put the genie back in the bottle, is that it? Maybe you should have thought of that before you conspired to destroy my property. That said, I'd know nothing of the Omerta's plot if you'd kept it secret. Perhaps I owe you my gratitude after all. The information you provided will suffice. When the battle for Hoover Dam comes, I'll make sure my Securitrons are waiting for the Omertas. Or instead of owning up to it, we can pass a 50 speech check to sugarcoat it a bit. We can say, well, I had to infiltrate the Omertas in order to gain their confidence. In that case, I commend you for your initiative. What do you recommend for next steps? We have two choices. We can say, send your Securitrons into Gamora and kill off the Omertas leaders. Exactly how many civilians did you want to die in that crossfire? Still, you raise a fair point. My Securitrons can handle this. When the Legion attacks Hoover Dam, I'll be waiting for the Omertas. Or we can suggest that House waits for them to make their move first. After all, forewarned is forearmed. I suppose you're right. When the Legion assaults Hoover Dam, my Securitrons will be waiting for the Omertas. They won't accomplish much. We can Your hear from the tone in his voice that House wasn't particularly pleased with any of these options. Our second option for resolving this conflict is to simply start killing members of the Omertas. In so doing, we turn everyone in the casino hostile, and we immediately fail their quests. If we choose this option, then the next time we speak with House... I'd hoped to have you investigate the Omertas. But after the trouble you caused at Gamora, they won't let you in the front door. <sighs> I'll see if I can make some progress with informants. You're useless in this matter. But the Omertas had it coming. An opinion you expressed with supreme subtlety and finesse. Moving on. <laughs> and House is unimpressed. The third and final option is to side with Kachino. 
With Kachino's help, we uncover the plot of the Omerta bosses, and we kill the plot's key instigators. Clandon, who's trying to secure the chlorine, Big Saul, and Nero, who are working with the Legion to set the whole thing up. Once they're dead, and once Kachino becomes the new boss of the casino, we can head back to house. What do you have to report about the Omertas? The Omertas who are conspiring against you are dead. Well done. They won't be causing any trouble then. Your next assignment is to locate and destroy remnants of the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. The NCR nearly did the job at Helios 1 a few years ago, but there seem to have been survivors, unfortunately. Given the Brotherhood's fanatical views on technology, they can be counted on to oppose my regime. Please, put them out of my misery. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on now. Yeah, I need to ask a few questions first. A few questions, and then you'll handle the Brotherhood, I hope? Before I run off and kill these guys, can you tell me a bit about the Brotherhood of Steel? They're a terrorist group, basically. Militant, quasi-religious fanatics, obsessed with hoarding pre-war technology. Not all technology, mind you. You don't see them raiding hospitals to cart away auto docks or armfuls of prosthetic organs. No, they greatly prefer the sort of technology that puts people in hospitals. Or graves, rather, since hospitals went the way of the dodo. Why do you hate the Brotherhood so much? Because they're ridiculous. Because they gallivant around the Mojave, pretending to be knights of yore. Or did, until the NCR showed them that ideological purity and shiny power armor don't count for much when you're outnumbered 15 to 1. The world has no use for emotionally unstable techno-fetishists. Just wipe them out, will you? Isn't there any possibility for a diplomatic solution? We're talking about a coterie of bulging-eyed fanatics who think all pre-war technology belongs to them. They'll never accept my using an army of robots to defend New Vegas. While it's a fight I can win, I'd rather sidestep it altogether. Now, if we've already discovered the Brotherhood in Hidden Valley, we can report this to Mr. House and say the Brotherhood is holed up in Hidden Valley. You're absolutely right. You must have had run-ins with them, as have I. Since 2278, I've lost five roaming Securitrons near Hidden Valley. I didn't receive any clear video of the incident, but telemetry from the units destroyed indicates they were attacked with energy weapons. It's obvious that the Brotherhood has a base in Hidden Valley or thereabouts. Finding it won't be easy, but getting inside will be the real trick. Do you have any recommendations on how we can complete this mission? From time to time, the NCR has assaulted Brotherhood bunkers. In four of the six incidents I know of, the bunkers self-destructed. I surmise it's standard practice for the Brotherhood to install a self-destruct system. It's consistent with their uncompromising nature. You might use that against them, or kill them another way. It's up to you. Return when it's done. Once we get this far in the quest line, we permanently become hostile with Caesar's Legion, and we fail all of the Legion quests. Now, I covered the Brotherhood of Steel found in Fallout New Vegas in great detail on my video all about Hidden Valley, which you can watch here. In that video, we resolved a petty political dispute. One of our options is to place in charge of the Brotherhood of Steel a man who is either content to remain hidden underground or a man who wants to take the fight to the NCR. Upon completing those quests, we find an option here to say, when the Legion assaults the dam, the Brotherhood will attack the NCR and weaken them. Not surprising. Also, not acceptable. I didn't ask you to tell me what they were planning. I asked you to kill them. This was a waste of time. Go back to the bunker and destroy it. My directions have been clear from the start. So no matter what we do, our only options to continue working with House is to completely destroy the Brotherhood. At this point, we also fail many of the endgame NCR quests, further locking us in to the House ending. This whole Brotherhood situation is even more tragic if we have Veronica as a companion and if we've completed all of her quests. Upon doing so, we fully understand all of the failings of the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. They don't necessarily come across as sympathetic characters, but 
they do come across as people with their own beliefs who have built a community and have their own families whom they love. And House wants us to come here and destroy them all. While heading to Hidden Valley, we find the correct bunker, the one with a stump growing on top of it, which leads to their hidden base. We have two options to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel. The first is the straightforward one, and that's to simply attack them. We do find something here that can help us out. If immediately upon entering, we turn left into the security office, we find a terminal behind Paladin Ramos locked with a hard lock. This is called the turret control terminal. If we hack it, we find an option to set allowed targets. This menu controls whom the guard turrets in the bunker are allowed to attack. Now all Brotherhood personnel have been registered as non-combatants, so the turrets will ignore them. But we have an option to remove this non-combatant flag from all Brotherhood personnel. If we choose this option, we essentially program the turrets to consider all Brotherhood of Steel members as enemies. We can then start the killing. And with the help of the lasers, we make quick work of them. But once they're dead in this primary chamber, we need to move on to the next zone. And here, we don't find turrets. Instead, we need to do it the old-fashioned way. Quiet here, heading back. This will be over quickly. Gah! At this point, I was confused because I had thought I killed everyone, and yet the quest was not completed. But looking on my Pip Boy compass, I did see one red marker close to the firing range. Looking behind the stall where the shop was, we don't see anyone, but I had a suspicion. Sure enough, we found the shopkeeper hiding behind some crates. 
Once she's dead, we complete this portion of the quest. But let's say ammunition is rare. We don't mind murder, we just don't want to waste our lead. The other option is to head to level 2 of the bunker and then immediately turn left. We have to pass all the way to the VR sim room. Here we find a terminal called the Self-Destruct Authorization Terminal. By order of Elder McNamara, engaging the bunker's self-destruct sequence requires the ascent of the Head Scribe, the Head Paladin, and the Elder of the Chapter. Each of these brothers has been given a key card to be procured in case of emergency. When all three key cards are inserted below, the password to the self-destruct terminal to the right will be generated. Please report a lost or stolen key card immediately. If we try to generate the self-destruct password before gaining these key cards, we get an error message. Please insert all three key cards below. To find the first key card, we simply pickpocket it from head scribe Taggart here in the VR sim room. Next, we head to Elder McNamara's office. This one is easy. We often find him sitting in his chair, and we can sneak behind him. And the final key card is held by Paladin Hardin. His quarters are in a chamber right next to Elder McNamara's office. We often find him hanging out in his own room. We can sneak behind him while he's sitting to pickpocket the final key card. With all three key cards in hand, we can return to the VR sim room, wait for Apprentice Watkins to move away, and then use them to generate a password from the self-destruct authorization terminal. If we are successful, we get a note added. Hidden Valley Self-Destruct Password. Inspecting it in our Pip-Boy, we see that the password is from my cold, dead hands. It's likely that McNamara put this password together as a last resort if their compound was discovered and invaded by the NCR. Yes, NCR, you can get our technology, but you must wrest it from our cold, dead hands. We then activate the nearby self-destruct terminal. We find an option to begin the bunker self-destruct sequence. Are you sure you would like to initiate the self-destruct sequence? If we choose yes, we immediately lose karma with the Brotherhood of Steel, and we see the message. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Please exit the bunker in a calm, orderly fashion. Now, even though my character here had max stealth and was wearing the stealth suit Mark II, I couldn't sneak out without being discovered. Ready? So we run through the hallways, dodging laser fire, climb the stairs, and race towards the exit. The camera shakes, and we hear a loud explosion. But we don't see much smoke, no fire. However, if we head back inside the bunker, we find a few survivors who are only alive because they were chasing after us. We can put them down here. guys dealt with. And we see that the doorway leading into the bunker is now blocked with rubble. If we wait until morning, we see big black pillars of smoke pouring from the bunker's vents. And thus the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel is no more. With that, we can return to Mr. House to receive our next mission. A mission which we'll tackle in our next video. But before we go, we really need to process what we've done here. If we completed all of the Brotherhood's quests, and we completed Veronica's personal quest, we realize just how stubborn and isolationist the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel are. For example, they only recruit new members from within, a practice that has ensured that they remain small forever. And they do go out of their way to hoard all technology. If, after activating House's Securitron army, we walk around the Brotherhood of Steel bunker, we overhear them talking about about exactly what Mr. House feared. NCR military transmissions say the robots on the strip have been upgraded. Wish we had eyes on intel. Our instruments show some impressive power fluctuations coming from across the river. What's going on over there? The reports say Mr. House's robots are now using tech we've never heard of. We need to send a team up there soon. Does this mean that House is right? That if left alive, the Brotherhood of Steel, as outnumbered as they would be, would really try to make war upon the Strip just because House has Securitrons? 
I think the evidence may point towards this direction, and this is even with Elder McNamara installed as Elder. Elder McNamara is the less radical of the two Mojave Chapter Brotherhood of Steel Elder choices in the game. During the Brotherhood quests, we have an option to choose which person becomes Elder, and even after choosing Elder McNamara, we still overhear them talking about doing something to stop Mr. House and his Securitron, so I guess that means House was right but it just feels like murder to destroy all of these people. In my game, since I left Veronica at the Lucky 38, she remained friendly, even after I destroyed her family. If you missed her story, I did a video dedicated to her, which you can watch here. We'll discover how she reacts to the death of her family when we go over all of the unique endings we get by siding with Mr. House. It's likely that we'll lose her as a companion after destroying the Brotherhood for Mr. House, unless our reputation was high enough with the Brotherhood before we did so. There are only two ways to do this. The first is to complete the unmarked quest, Pistol Packing, where we discover the missing laser rifle, the quest, Still in the Dark by favoring Elder McNamara, and the quest, Eyesight for the Blind. This gives us enough positive reputation with the Brotherhood to counteract the negative reputation we get by destroying the bunker. It also helps to end the Lonesome Road DLC by not destroying the Lung 15 and the Dry Wells. This also gives us enough Brotherhood of Steel reputation to prevent Veronica from leaving our party. The other option is to make sure Veronica is at the Lucky 38 before we attack the bunker and to make sure that we never get discovered while killing the Brotherhood. We have to kill every single Brotherhood member from stealth. A tricky thing to do. But either of those two ways allows us to keep Veronica as a companion and to destroy the Brotherhood for Mr. House. What are your thoughts so far? Did you have it in you to destroy the Brotherhood for Mr. House during your gameplay? Do you think that House is right? And that ultimately, it's impossible to negotiate with the Brotherhood of Steel. That they really are terrorists, as he describes them, who really would have tried to wage war upon him to try and get their hands on his Securitrons. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish many videos every single week here on my channel, and if you want to make sure that you don't miss the next episode in this series, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got new emojis for sponsors here on my YouTube channel. If you become a YouTube sponsor, you gain access to a bunch of new Oxhorn emojis that you can use during any of my live chats. For example, during my live show, Scotch and Smoke Rings. I have a bunch of great emojis of available already, and as I get more sponsors, I get the option to unlock more. To learn more, you can click the blue sponsorship button to consider becoming a sponsor. I have a brand new shirt in the shop, protect the people at a minute's notice. This shirt has another version with the text, civilization will rise again. The heroic man looks over a valley just as lightning strikes and three artillery flares sail through the sky. The shirts come in a wide array of colors and in a variety of sizes, both for men and women. And you can find this design on not just shirts, but also a wide range of products. If interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming either a YouTube sponsor or a patron on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a brand new episode.